What's going on, everyone? Badger here. Make sure to like and sub, and let's get into this. So full disclosure, I love the original Roadhouse movie, Patrick Swayze, uh, Sam Elliott. It's almost a perfect movie, and they're going to they're gonna mess this up. I know they are. It, it looks like a very fun movie on uh, the trailer for this Amazon Prime Roadhouse, but it does not look... It's, it, it seems like another one of those movies that they could have called it anything. Why did you have to call it Roadhouse? He's not acting like the Patrick Swayze character. He's a complete reinvention. They're not even really trying to hit the same notes that they did in the first one. Just seems like a dumb action flick, which is fine. All right with that. Turns out I'm not the only one that apparently had issues with this. I mean, that's not necessarily what this is about. But the point is, there's been some troubles along the road to get this movie made at all. And here we go with Variety talking about it. Hollywood loves a bare-knuckle brawl. The town got a battle royale with Roadhouse. The reboot of the 1989 cult favorite, which launches, <clears throat> excuse me, which launches on Amazon Prime on March 21st, sparked a fierce fight behind the scenes over its release. While studio filmmaker standoffs are not uncommon, this one featured such uh, subplots as involvement of a notorious private investigator, a producer given the heave-ho, a cameo from Ari Emanuel, and a director going scorched earth. Even more shocking, some of the embarrassing details began to publicly spill out in the recent months, culminating with direct, uh, director Doug Lyman promising to boycott the film's premiere at SXSW, uh, Jesus Christ, South by Southwest, I believe, on March 8th. Despite the drama, the movie is expected to be one of Amazon Prime's most watched films, and now they're going to talk about how things went wrong. Well, I can tell you the first thing that went wrong is you didn't actually adapt the 89 classic. You made a new one for modern day. <laughs> In November 2021, Mike DeLuca and Pam Abdi were running MGM and began negotiating with Lyman to direct and Jake Gyllenhaal to star as the tough guy bouncer played by Patrick Swayze in the original. Joel Silver, who produced the Swayze version for MGM, was on board to bring the film into the modern era. Gyllenhaal's character is now a former UFC fighter, completely at odds with the character who didn't like the fight and did it because it was necessary at the time mgm was making movies for the big screen and the prospect of streaming didn't factor into discussions but after amazon closed its 8.5 billion dollar acquisition of mgm in march 2022 the trajectory uh, trajectory rather of roadhouse changed in july 2022 deluca and abdi left to run warner brothers and the film was put into turnaround still amazon studios chief jennifer salky who has greenlit some horrible things and passed on some good ones. Notably, a Conan show with the guys that went to go do House of the Dragon. So, uh, sources familiar with the negotiations say the filmmakers <clears throat> filmmakers and Gyllenhaal were given a choice. Make the film for $60 million and get a theatrical release, or take the $85 million and go streaming only, and they opted for the latter. They took all the money, says one knowledgeable source. And for $60 million? Bro, Godzilla minus one was made for under 15. You should have no CGI in this movie. This should have easily been done for whatever. Drinker made a whole video about that. They don't know how to make a movie for this much anymore. Um, on August 2022, August 2nd, 2022, Amazon put out a press release that erased any ambu uh, ambiguity about the film's distribution plans. Roadhouse was labeled an Amazon Prime video movie with Salky touting the appeal for our global audience. Lyman and Silver both signed off on the press release with Lyman gushing. I'm thrilled to put my own spin on beloved Roadhouse legacy and Silver noting he was so excited to bring this newly imagined version to audiences around the world. But the acrimony was only just beginning. Silver continued to push for a theatrical release and grew so combative that the studio threatened to cut ties with him and prompted Emmanuel, CEO of WME Parent Endeavor, to lobby on Silver's behalf. Sources say Emmanuel reached out to Salky and begged her not to fire the legendary producer. One source familiar with the back and forth described his pleas as desperate. Emmanuel enlisted private investigator turned quasi consultant Anthony Pelicano in an effort to keep an effort to help keep Silver Jesus in an effort to help Silver keep his job. Uh, it made no sense why Ari cared, said an insider. WME doesn't even rep Lyman. CAA does. And ooh, and everyone's been backing out of CAA lately. Uh, all the while, things continued to look rosy from the outside with all parties on board with the streaming plan. 
Deadline reported that UFC superstar and WME rep Conor McGregor, which we see, was joining the cast, noting that the film would stream on Prime Video in more than 240 countries and territories worldwide at release. The story made no mention of the fact that the two-time UFC uh, champ was facing multiple sexual assault. Well, we're not going to talk about that because that hasn't even gone to court yet. So in late 2023, Salky finally booted Silver from working on the Roadhouse rollout for verbal abuse of several staffers, including including Amazon Studios and MGM marketing head Sue Kroll and Amazon film head Courtney Valenti. The studio also severed ties with Silver on the upcoming Mark Wahlberg film Play Dirty, prompting the producer to hire high-profile Hollywood litigator Brian Friedman. Uh, and they resolved that legal dispute somehow, but there's no word of yet how they did that. When news of Silver's ouster broke on November 30th, Pelicano became the de facto spurks, uh, spokesperson on the brouhaha, noting the parting of the ways is amicable. He was not fired. There were just disagreements with creative concerns. Well, he's a lawyer. So uh, just as the maelstrom was dying down, Lyman went nuclear with an open letter on January 24th, writing that he would boycott the film and claiming that Amazon has no interest in supporting cinema. So he took the money. He was fine with it. And then Silver got ousted, probably took money for it. He didn't get extra money for it. So now he has a problem with it not coming out in theaters. That's just my guessing. Uh, the missive appears to be the final shot on a project fraught with discord. Ultimately, ultimately, it's left some with bad taste. It's so disrespectful to everyone who worked hard on it, says one person involved. It's a great, big, fun streaming movie. Yeah, I bet you it's a great, big, fun that Rotten Tomatoes will give it a 15. Trust me, we're going to do a whole video, uh, Mr. Tech Rat, myself, on how much shittier this is probably going to be. We have to wait. We have to wait. Maybe it's good. But if it comes out, it's as we suspect, we are going to have a whole video essay come out about how this is nothing like the actual original Roadhouse. And this was doomed for failure no matter where it was released. But we'll find out. Let me know down in the comments what you think of all this. If you're excited for Roadhouse or if you think they probably should have just called it something else. Like, share, sub. If you've done that, thank you. If you're going to do that, thank you. And Well, bye.